Hello everyone. Um, this is just a review of my build that I um, started about half a year ago and uh, finally got some requests to narrate some pictures and uh, give you some more information. I started with uh, a work van that I had access to and uh, I still needed to use it for work but uh, I was able to use it on off work times. So um, I started with this. Um, something simple. So I just put in a little bit of money. It's an empty shell van that uh, we use to carry pallets of material. We usually carry about two pallets in. So I started by um, laying out the floor plan and uh, drew it out and uh, came up with this idea where I would put two green boxes that I build. And uh, one of the issues we had was the pallets would move around inside the van, especially when you break. So something like this would um, hold the pallets in, would be a lot more safer. So I imagined we'd still be able to hold two pallets in here and uh, I would use some type of small restraint system in there and it would definitely make things safer. Um, so in order to convert this into a camper, I decided to make a uh, sheets of um, wood. I punched some holes in it to see if I can think I can make it light and uh, I wanted to put some piano hinges on it so I can kind of bend it over <clears throat> and the hinges I found were from Home Depot uh, at Lowe's also and uh, they're very inexpensive so I thought it'd be a cool idea and then when I don't use it I can just fold it up and uh, I planned out to have a full-size bed and I was looking for a futon mattress something easy to fold easy to carry and this is a picture of the plates being folded up into a, a three layer, something a little bit smaller, easy to maintain. Here I have the bed inside with the plates all in place and uh, the blue little boxes are my batteries. I planned on making space for about eight deep cycle batteries um, just so I can do everything. I, I would never have to worry about running out of juice. Um, I did start ordering some materials. This is the inverter that I used. I didn't see myself using more than a thousand watts, so I figured I'd get a thousand watts with a surge of about two thousand. And this one, a lot of people had good reviews on it. Um, I like the fact that it came with a remote panel. It actually tells you how much power you're using. It actually tells you certain things that oh, there's too much um, voltage going in, too much, too little voltage coming out. Um, so after I got this main component for a really good price, I started hunting for batteries. I ended up landing on some Optima Blue Tops. These are D31M uh, deep cycle batteries. So after I got those two, I was like, okay, so everything sounds good. So I started on the van. Originally, I thought <clears throat> about trying to sound in the van first. So I basically took, um, I think this is called a roof sealer. And uh, it's basically tar with an aluminum backing. I went ahead and did the whole wall. And uh, I, of course, cleaned it up on the bottom so it would stick well. And I used a little rubber roller right there on the fender. Um, you can see I just rolled it on. I then would cover that with a radiant barrier. It's the bubble wrap stuff. And I used um, 3M uh, high strength uh, spray adhesive. I tried actually using the cheaper stuff before, but it just didn't stick, so I had to actually use the 3M. So um, I went ahead and here's the radiant barrier going across on, this is actually the driver's side wall. And uh, this picture you'll see, I actually cut out the radiant barrier first, then on top of the radiant barrier I would add on a, um, I think this is 3 quarter inch foam with another aluminum backing on it. So this is what I landed at in terms of insulation wise. So it'd be the sound deadening, rating barrier, then foam. Um, I went ahead and started to get some uh, marine grade plywood uh, cut up for my floors and my box. And I had that professionally cut and I already um, knew what kind of general dimensions I wanted to do. I also started on the roof, um, the ceiling, uh, while the Things were being cut because it took a little bit of time. I ended up buying about three sheets of, uh, I think I used three quarter inch or one inch uh, plywood. <clears throat> I did the same thing on the top, put the radiant berry on, but the ribs were a lot more deeper on the roof. So I ended up putting two layers of radiant barrier and then uh, I would put the foam on top. So 
In this next picture, you can see how I taped it when it wasn't going very well or I had odd uh, length of sheets um, because I tried to use everything I could. Um, some of the areas I ended up using some nice uh, single sheets and it would just go across the whole top like this. And um, this is the back of the van. You can see there's still a gap on the outside. And when you put the foam on there, it ends up taking up a lot of that gap, which um, worked out really well. So um, I ended up using the pink foam from Home Depot, I think, or Lowe's. Um, this is what my floors look like. Um, after about 13 years or 15 years of using the van, uh, got some oil spills and whatnot. It, it was um, dirty and I had to clean all this stuff. I work in plastic, so I have all these little plastic beads all over the place. Um, so I cleaned everything up and I wanted to have nice new clean floors because I like to walk around with bare feet and uh, I hate socks and uh, wanted to be clean. So I went ahead and I cut um, the floor uh, boards out uh, to the pattern of the walls so that everything would fit and when you do this especially when you go around the ribs and you put everything together it locks everything in place where it doesn't even move so it ended up working out because I'd be able to remove the seats whenever I uh, re remove the planks whenever I wanted to so I actually ended up building everything and mocking everything up without the actual floors in there so um, here I have one of the seats that I uh, picked up for a good price too. Uh, these are like 2014-2015 Sienna XLE something or other, the high-end um, second row seats. They're the captain's chairs that actually recline and have integrated seat belts and have foot rests on it. So everything um, was good. I have a picture of the whole floor in. And as you can see, there's very little gaps. I cut everything out nice and neatly. And it took a little bit of time, a little bit of trial and error, but it did work out really well. The marine grade plywood, it's so nice. I think the ones I got were sanded. Um, now, in terms of ventilation, I ended up going with the deluxe model uh, Max Air, the ones on the top. And I went with the white one just because it would match the, um, the paint on the outside a little better. And I kind of wanted to blend in. So I went ahead and picked up one of those and this was the point of no return. <laughs> I ended up cutting the roof and it was very scary at the beginning, but <clears throat> worked out okay. I ended up using a hand Dremel um, just because that's what I had. I went ahead and I marked it up and I did three sides and I tried to um, do a quick score on the fourth side. I ended up bending it in and out, in and out, and uh, it broke off really cleanly and very um, evenly. So. Here's a picture of the outside <clears throat> um, and uh, shortly after I think I used about like if I remember correctly it was about 15 Dremel wheels per length so four sides <clears throat> and uh, here's a picture I ended up getting like a couple little uh, rolls uh, tubes of the cutoff wheels and I ended up using these uh, reinforced ones and worked okay but I still ate through them so be prepared either do that or get a better uh, cutoff wheel <clears throat> here is the um, insert for the ceiling fan and it went in perfectly <clears throat> so um, I was starting out and prepared to um, drill some pilot holes and I used self tapping screws for the bottom side and uh, it worked out pretty good uh, very happy with the fitment very happy with the build of the fan uh, very uh, well built didn't think uh, it was gonna leak so I'm very happy with it. I tested out the electronics a little bit um, here and there and uh, really happy with the fan so now what I ended up having to do when I started working on the van is I noticed that there's a lot of rusting going on uh, a little bit here and there so I decided to um, try to think of ways to do that and I'll talk about that a little more later but what I ended up doing was only focusing on the fan cutout area I went ahead and I cleaned it up I washed it I sanded it I primed it and I painted it white um, and of course the white doesn't match but I wanted to just at least get something on there and it came out pretty nice so I was like thinking oh maybe I can do that spot wise to the roof and I ended up using the standard Dicor 500 series the self-leveling kind and this stuff I got it for about five bucks on eBay so if you guys want it try to look on eBay for it 
um, got a real good deal. It's like five to seven dollars. Um, it looks like it won't level, but it does level pretty good. I ended up putting two layers, one around the seam, then I went again um, around the bolts. And uh, you can see here, I put two really good levels on there and it still has some height to it now that it's um, all dried up, but <laughs> for sure, um, looks like it'll hold the seal. So definitely put as much as I needed to be um, generous. Here is the pink foam that I use for the ceiling. I ended up reading up that this pink foam is a little bit more insulating in terms of performance. So I ended up using this on the ceiling because I already got the white um, foam for the side walls. So here it is all done. I stayed away from the fan area because I wasn't sure how that's going to go. At this point, I did not have any idea how I was going to finish this cosmetically. So I went ahead and I um, just taped it. And here you can see the foam reaches up to the top of the ribs. It's a very um, fitted look. So I ended up coming up with this idea of using a sheet of foam, uh, not sheet of thin plywood. And uh, I cut it into a long strip. I bolted it up and I was thinking, hey, you know, this wouldn't be too bad to just leave it alone. So I went ahead and I put a radiant barrier strip on the wood, the size of the wood. And then I screwed it back in and it uh, worked out pretty good. And um, it also kind of incidentally held, held, holds up the foam and I did have some areas where I didn't use the 3M high strength spray adhesive was coming off so it's kind of helped it out a little bit. I ended up starting on the battery boxes. <clears throat> Here I cut all my little panels out. I tested the long um, dimensions of the, the, the box and I just kind of laid it up to try to make sure everything, all my dimensions were working okay and, uh, you know, kind of see. Um, I started by um, sanding the edges. I glued it and then I uh, screwed it together. I used about, I think it's 2.75 inch screws. I used almost three inch screws to go all the way in because I knew this box was going to be holding a bunch of batteries and I just didn't want the batteries to be popping out whenever we hit a bump. So um, I had an idea of mounting it to the floor, mounting the box to the floor in case there was any issues, um, something, everything would hold together. Um, I ended up cutting some of the ribs at an angle so that it would be easier to grab the batteries. Um, so I thought that would help. <clears throat> So here I have one side assembled. Um, kind of went together okay. I had to make a couple adjustments here and there. One side I built it upside down and I just had to flip the screws because the other box was mirror image. Um, I ended up using this Ultimate because I heard it was waterproof and I figured waterproof glue plus marine grade plywood would be a good combo. So that's the way I ended up um, landing. <coughs> Now, as I assembled it, I kind of assembled it one at a time and I was still thinking about how I was going to end up because in the area of the wheel well, I wanted to actually make that storage and um, I ended up putting three layers of sound deadening on there because as I sat on it to work in the area, I could still hear it. So I thickened up the um, sound deadening a little bit and I do know if you use legitimate really heavy uh, sound ending. You won't have to multi-layer it, but this ended up working out for me. The uh, roof sealer is uh, pretty cheap, so I ended up getting uh, narrow strips and thick strips, so it worked out really well. Here I mocked up the batteries. Um, fitment was good, very tight. I put the inverter on the front side of the driver side box and I cut out a little groove so it would uh, kind of just show out really nicely. Um, I can uh, just plug in whenever I need to and remote would be controlled by the panels on the opposite side. So this is what it kind of looks like. Uh, it's kind of overcut. I actually went over that with a hand circular saw, a portable, uh, the rechargeable battery saw, circular saws. And I cut off the extended side because I wanted it to be pinched in with the gas funnel. I then started working on my passenger side. And that's where all my monitoring, switch panel, distribution, power, uh, everything was going to be um, located. So I went ahead and I laid out two batteries on the passenger side and uh, <clears throat> I hooked preliminary a little bit up. And before I hooked everything up, I did um, 
uh, charge everything up to make sure everything was good. I installed my DC distribution panel and this panel was going to be distributing 24 volt and 12 volt at the same time. So I had um, two uh, 12 volt lighter sockets on the front side and here I have the two boxes uh, pretty much built up. I laid everything out. You can see the panel for the bed is right there. That would be blocking the pallets when I put my work uh, raw materials in. Um, I would just lift it up and put it onto the front side. I didn't put the piano hinges yet, but um, I just wanted to mock everything up and kind of figure out how I was going to do it. So, so far so good. Um, measurements worked out okay. There's a little bit of play, so I have some room for error. I went ahead and started up uh, wiring everything up. The little gray box is a 24 volt to 12 volt step down that can handle 240 watts of power at 20, 20 amps. Um, the other box on the back side is my solar controller. I got the SunSaver MPPT controller. Um, I ended up getting a 300 watt panel with a 24 volt system that manages to work okay with the, um, the cheaper uh, solar charger. I cut up the box tops and I bought some uh, nice hinges from the store that worked out really well. I um, uh, cut out both sides, made sure everything was good. Then I started to assemble the hinges one at a time. Um, I had attached two of them and I had some issues with rubbing on both sides. Um, so when I opened it up, it was very difficult to open because it was rubbing on the next door over. So. What I ended up doing was, after assembling one, and I noticed this one, when you only put one hinge, it's not as stable, so I ended up putting two on each door. I used a zip tie, and I pushed it in between my doors, and it made a gap even enough to where I can lift up both sides and it wouldn't touch each other. So if you have a, a need for a spacer, a zip tie is a good idea. Um, so I went ahead and I started... Um, uh, contouring the back side of the lid to the back of the wall because that's what I didn't do. I just cut them to length and made sure they fit all along all the boxes. And uh, I would go around the ribs and I still didn't know what I wanted to do cosmetically. So I went ahead and I started working on the opposite side. This is the second side box that I was working on. <clears throat> and uh, you can see here one's open. Then what I'll do is I'll attach the second one, make sure everything fits, open it up, make sure everything opens up and closes. And um, so this is the driver's side. The first area is going to be my inverter power area. The second wheel well area, I was going to put some uh, first aid kit stuff, just some general stuff as storage. And then batter batteries will be the next four components on the back side. So, excuse me, on the back side. So I planned out a maximum of about eight batteries in here. And I figured that would be plenty for a weekend. And my goal was to just um, get through a weekend without needing sun. <clears throat> So um, I matched it to the contour of the uh, ribs and everything kind of kept rolling forward. <coughs> Excuse me. So then I started working on the Sienna seat. Now um, I took off the factory mounting hardware and I ended up buying this custom uh, seat bracket. And it's a standard uh, uh, bolt pattern for the floor. So I went ahead and mounted it onto the floor. I wanted it to be on the driver's side just because it would be further away from the door, but I ended up putting it over here um, just because it was easier, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure. I looked at the floor. I wanted to mount it through the floor all the way, so I had to watch out for the gas tank was on the other side and those other weird issues, so I just ended up putting it here. Um, really love this seat. Very comfortable. Um, it reclines, does everything, has um, baby seat mounts, which I required in my setup. So here is where my... Uh, baby seat is attached. Um, you can see I have a kill switch for the solar coming in. I have a kill switch on the other side for the battery banks. And I do have um, a battery selector, but I didn't install that yet. Went ahead and tested everything. Uh, fitment wise, no shaking, very solid. <clears throat> it's going through all two layers of wood floors and also the frame and the metal side of the uh, car. Here I have the planks, all three have been built uh, and I screwed everything in and everything 
looks like it works out okay. At this time in the build, I actually found two more Optima batteries, so I ended up with four. Um, so slowly building my um, my battery bank. So here is um, kind of laid everything out because I would move the box in and out. But um, so I'll go ahead and continue this uh, video in the next video. Um, so far this is about maybe about a month of working on the van and a uh, uh, very long path still left over to catch up to now so i'll join you in the next video thank you for listening